So I have his friend and he contacts me over years of time. He asks how I'm doing. And then he says, you don't believe in Jehovah anymore. Very blunt, but you should expect that from me. Has your reading of God Delusion, which is the book, affected you? And he goes on to talk about how my beliefs are incorrect or invalidated. He says, all of the fossil evidence for supposedly for evolution fits into a boxcar, which I believe is not true at all. <laughs> Yet hundreds of millions of fossils support the idea of nothing changing with the species. That's a slippery slope right there. See this? It's called a gumball. <laughs> It's this fruit and seed of the sweet gum tree. And in Latin, it's called, it's one of my favorite Latin trees. It's called liquid ambar styraciflua. <laughs> Pretty cool. It makes these really neat fruits. They last a long time. How was it going back to school? It was awesome. It was definitely structure. I like the structure of school. Um, it's, Schools have this wonderful world they've preserved and built and maintained where everybody's treated in this academic, academically like important way. And it makes you feel amazing to go to school. You feel like you're part of this whole higher, higher life perspective. You are really important when you're in school. Your grades matter. Your attitude matters. You, you have constructive things that you're doing. You're, it's amazing. It's good for somebody like me who just wanders around paycheck to paycheck. I like it. Hate this street. I just have to show you something. The name of these rolled up seafood things. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's drive to the Laurelhurst area okay. and then walk everywhere. About to try. Let's do it. And oh my okay. God. Okay. Here it goes. It's so good. Oh my God. <laughs> She you know, left the witnesses. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you filming me? Yeah. No! <laughs> Go on, tell me about your ex witness girlfriend. She sent me a script for her play. She's doing a whole play on being an ex witness. No way. Yeah, and she wrote a script. Opening file. So, this is the interview with the elders. So, she sits down for an elders meeting. Elder number one says a brief prayer. And then Elder 2 says, How long did you spend fornicating on the evening of February the 16th? <laughs> Elder 3 says, Do you feel that he pressured you into sexual intercourse? Elder 4, Did you use protection? Elder 1, What position were you in when you had sex? Elder 2, Did he climax? Elder 3, When he finished, did he finish inside of you or outside of you? Elder 4, Did you plan on having intercourse? <laughs> Elder 1, did you ever engage in oral intercourse? Elder 2, did he touch you below the waist with his hands? Elder 3, do you feel guilty? Elder 4, were you a virgin prior to this night? Elder 1, <laughs> when do you think your weakness for sin began? Elder 2, Sister Evans. Elder 3, Sister Evans. Elder 4, Sister Evans. Elder 1, Sister Evans. Um, yeah, so... Portland, I don't know, it's a place to live. It's next to mountains and oceans, and how many times did I really take advantage of that? I don't know, enough? <laughs> you always wonder that when you live somewhere. Did I do all the cool things I could have done? Did I see everything that was awesome? I think I'm okay there. <laughs> uh, four out of five stars, maybe? Maybe three out of five stars? I came here because I wanted to go back to school. I just needed it. it. It was time, I was overdue. I had to take some kind of program, it didn't matter. I had to learn something about, something I cared about, and I picked landscaping. It's about creating something. I like that idea of it. Creating 
a space with interesting plants, with time, with smells, with nature, the rhythm of nature. It's awesome. Somebody designed this circle here with these plants. It's really neat. That's called a hookera. This is Virginia. This here is called an umbel. It's really actually unique in the plant world. It's just a, a way plants organize themselves to make fruit. It's neat. And there's a New Zealand flax, which is formium. It's a really cool plant. That's a fuchsia. It's a passion flower vine on that palm right there. That's a Tracheocarpus fortunii windmill palm. That's Mahonia charity or buckthorn. This plant here is from Africa. It's called a Melianthus major. It's pretty cool. This one is called Sarcococca confusa. It's from the Himalayas. I learned all about plants because I think they're more fascinating than aliens. <laughs> they are aliens, really. All around us. You have to purposefully engineer your life away from the American way to not do what society is doing. And that's hard because there's all these pressures around it. And there's a really crazy bohemian world out there of people doing crazy awesome things that they love. <laughs> and sometimes you lose touch with that world. It's unfortunate, but it happens. Let's cross here. She says, I'm so sorry, we just had sex once. I feel so guilty. I'm scared that Jehovah will never love me like he used to and destroy me at Armageddon. She cries. I'm so sorry, please forgive me. She goes on to be forgiven by Elder One. And then she says, Incredible, it was one of the worst performances of my career and they never doubted it for a second. <laughs> How could I possibly be expected to live in a cult world like this? I quote Ferris Bueller, life moves pretty fast, and if you don't stop and look around, you might miss it. Mexico, I'm going to Mexico for three weeks. I need this to happen. It's gonna be fun. This town's depressing. Try living here in the winter. It sucks. <laughs> it's boring. Beaches, books, sun. Uh, hopefully some cool parties on the beach. Full moon parties, I don't know. Not just parties, I just wanna rest. Uh, chill out for a minute. I wanna see Mexico because it's enormous and full of awesome culture and people and fascinating places and I feel most Americans just experience the part of Mexico where they stay in a resort and party and drink too much tequila and then come home. And I don't want that experience in Mexico. I wanna, I wanna actually feel the culture and the differences of the regions. I like that idea. I just need to, I think, branch out a little bit I've seen some of Central America, Ecuador, Colombia, Nicaragua, primarily, but Mexico is just this whole thing. I, I really want to see it. <laughs> Got to. <laughs> and I'm okay at Spanish, so that works. It's a little bit easier. This is how I responded. I said, what seems to be the trouble? I haven't heard from you in years. Suddenly you email me blasting my choice not to believe in invisible spirit life forms. <laughs> I think it was rude of you, but if you want to talk, I'm open. I can only assume you're having a crisis of faith or doubts because I'm not supposed to be contacted according to the rules of Jehovah's Witnesses. Are you comfortable talking with me? I guess I deserve an explanation. After all, I sent every witness that mattered to me a full explanation letter of why I left that belief system. This is a rhododendron right here. This is a, a bug that's doing this. The bugs hatch from this underside vein here, and they come out and they suck all the juices out of these leaves, the uh, chlorophyll. It doesn't really kill the plant, but it kind of just makes it really ugly and awful for a long time. It weakens the plant. I mean, plants have a lot of resilience. Witnesses seem to associate paradise with fruit. 
And they think God is so loving because he created these amazing fruits. <laughs> it's strange. I don't get it. But I wrote in return. <laughs> I'm actually currently enrolled in school studying horticulture. I wanted to add that almost all of the fruits and vegetables were created by humans. None of them existed in the grocery store form. They were all bred and crossbred and hybridized by humans over thousands of years, mostly in Asia, and that's true. Witnesses don't like researching anything about that, though. All the wonderful flavors and plants are human ideas come to fruition by using horticultural techniques. Nothing but humans puts food on your table. The irrigation systems, planting, harvesting, breeding, pollinating, transport to markets are completely accomplished by manpower. Jehovah never did anything for our meals. People are always praying to him about that. <laughs> I don't know. I went on to say, I don't know how or when or where the first cell of life appeared on this planet or in this universe. I'm comfortable not knowing. It's okay. It's okay to live with a little mystery. I might never know what's out there or why the universe exists. And after all, the universe is under no obligation to explain itself to me. I don't feel that conjuring an all-powerful being, loving being, has any relevance to my life. <laughs>